My name's Jerry Choate. I was born and raised at True Community, north end of Young County, and I'm here today to try to give you a little information on what little I might know about it. Thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, where year, what year were you born? 1935. So, and True had an, a school? True had a school. I went to school the first three years there. And then we consolidated with Olney, Newcastle, and Graham. Okay. And I went to Newcastle and finished high school at Olney in 1953. How come you ended up in Olney? Because my dad went there. Oh. I said, I don't want to go to Olney. I want to stay in Newcastle. He said, you, you're going to Olney. So I went. Back in those days, you didn't sass him. Now, he, uh, he did what he thought was right. Yeah. And I'm glad I did now because I had so many more friends from both both areas. In the true community, like what did most people do for work, or did they have farms? Well, at true, it was strict agricultural area, so it was farming and uh, ranching, cowboying, and just general uh, farm and ranch work. Is that what your dad did? Right, all his life, eighty-five years. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his dad before him for 93 years, and his dad before him for 67 years. That's uh, their lifespan. Hamilton. Hamilton. Hamilton showed no E. <laughs> uh, he lived in the true community before He was born and raised there and lived there 85 years. Uh -huh. Actually, he and I both were born at Hamilton Hospital in Olney. And uh, that's where he got his name, Hamilton. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Hamilton that delivered him. And you said your grandfather lived in True? My grandfather was born one mile east of True, June the 3rd, 1885, and lived there for 80, 93 plus years. And, what was his name? Uh, James Henderson Choke. So you're a third-generation family. Right. Uh, my granddad, my dad's dad, uh, everyone called him Jim. Of course, his first name was James. They called him Jim. A lot of people knew him as Uncle Jimmy, but they're all gone now as well as him, of course. So, <clears throat> so was it your great-granddad that originally came to Young County? Yes. His name was Rufus. R-U-F-U-S, Rufus Henderson, Choate. So he came to Young County, or was he born here? He came to Young County, and uh, he was born in uh, Taneyville, Missouri, in 1851. And after the Civil War, I'm just going too fast. No, no, we got it recorded. After, after the Civil War, he... Uh, and his brother, Alan Choate, left home, left Taneyville, and uh, horseback. He was about 20, 21 years old, and uh, on horseback and came to, young, came to uh, Tarrant County. And his uh, brother, Alan, stayed there, and Grandpa Choate, as they called him, and I called him, although I never knew him, came on. Came on west and settled there one mile east of True on Salt Creek. So was he part of the, where he got <coughs> some land from the Te Republic of Texas? Or? You know, I, I imagine he did. He may have bought some. Uh, I don't know how all that worked out. Okay. Uh, I, never th I never thought to ask my granddad, you know. And he never did tell me hardly anything. So do you still live on the same property? Yeah. No, I live out here in Graham. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Do y'all still own the property we out do. there? Uh, we do. How big was it? How big was the property that you owned? Oh, at, that, at one time, I asked Dad that one time, and he said, I think when Grandpa Cho died, he owned about 2,000 acres. Wow. <clears throat> about the same size now? Well, scattered out, it's uh, about half that. And what did they uh, grow? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't there, but uh, <laughs> I'm suspicious. They grew oats, 
for their teams, uh, work teams, and also probably wheat. I don't know, not too sure about the wheat, and probably quite a bit of sorghum for uh, for uh, possibly cattle and also for swine. Yeah. You still raise cattle? Yep. It's a good industry to be in. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Is the family home still there, the original? Or? No, it burnt. Uh, the old ranch house burned, uh, I guess, before I was ever born. And Grandpa Choate died in 1918, my great granddad. And he and my grandmother, Flora B. Laramore Choate, moved to Newcastle. And lived down there. I, I think that's where he was living when he died. I'm not too sure about that. But uh, anyway, none of them's there. The home of my granddad, uh, Grandpa Choke built for him in 1910 when he and my grandmother married. Uh, it burned about 25 years ago. So there's no homesteads left out there? Not on Choke's side. They're on my grandmother's side. Her name was Myrtle Keith, K-E-I-T-H. She lived on Old West, right off the uh, Newcastle Island Highway on the west side. Okay. There's no white house up on the hill there. It says Choate Farm. Okay. And uh, that's where uh, she grew up. Now, she came from uh, Tennessee, way back out. I'm not sure. I really don't. The story goes that my grandmother and uh, great grandmother and Grandpa Choate met at a barn dance. That true? And said he. Uh, she said that she looked up and saw Grandpa Choate standing in the doorway with his six guns on, and said he sure was handsome. <laughs> well. <laughs> That that was in no telling when, because my, my granddad is the next to the oldest, and he was born in 1885, so that was probably in the, the mid 70s, I imagine, 1870. Oh, it was. You bet they even had cougars on on the creek. Yeah. Hadn't seen any lately. Son Tim saw one about 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. He was horseback down there, and he said he sure oh. glad that old horse didn't see him. Yeah. Oh, I bet that horse smelled him. He might have had an act on it, like maybe it was upwind or something. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> how many kids do you have? Many children. Yes. We have two boys and one girl. Okay, so it was your daughter I met that came through, the um, that gave me your name. Or... And my, my mother, my husband, my wife. Oh, that was your wife? Uh -huh. Oh, you tell her. Okay. You tell her. I said daughter. She may be coming to see and kissing you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you your wife? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Back in 1954, I was sitting at a filling station one Sunday afternoon, chewing the fat bunch of old boys, and this guy that was my best man stopped and said, I want you to come to Graham with me. I've got a date with Carol Sue. Well, Carol Sue was a cousin to my wife. And my wife was visiting from uh, uh, West Texas and working at the store downtown. I said, oh, Richard, I don't want to go to Graham, go to some gal I don't know. He said, yeah, he just kept on. So finally, I said, okay, let me take the car by the house and, and I'll go. <clears throat> it was on Sunday afternoon, so we was going to Bethel. Went over to the cousin's home, and uh, they were the girls were at home. And she said they're over the swimming pool, and uh, so we drove over there, parked on the south side of the pool, and they saw us and walked down and came around. And <laughs> I said, "Richard," he said, "What?" I said, "Which one's mine?" <laughs> and he said, "The little blonde." And I said, "Okay." And in my mind, 
Now, this is honest to God truth. In my mind, I said, I'm going to marry that girl. And that was in August the 12th, 1954. And we married April the 16th, 1955. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Tender trap. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a good marriage. We have three children. and Oh, goodness. I think we, we've got three sets of great-grands on the ground now. Oh, my goodness. And I think all total of the whole clan is about 20, 25, six of them. Oh, that's awesome. So, Don't get to see them very often. They're scattered. Any of them help run the ranch? Well, I had one old boy, old Derek, and, uh, Derek Choate and his wife and little Brazos. And they're right now they're up in the Phoenix, uh, close to where her folks live, working. Okay. And they'll be back one of these days. He's learning and bringing back knowledge? Well, he's, wor he's learning the uh, heat and air business. Oh. But uh, anyway. I'm sure that'll work out some way. I told him to come home and get a job here and live up there, too, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what's your earliest memory of the truth? Well, if you really want to know, people look at me kind of cross-eyed and I say this, but my, my dad had inherited an old 28 Buick. And in about 37, probably, he was still driving it. And we were going down to my grandparents on East of True. And uh, I remember laying up in that Buick, and uh, I don't know, it wasn't a rubble seat, because it was a four-door sedan, I think. But I remember laying up in that thing, and I saw the electric poles. And I got real happy because I knew it was going down my grandparents. Now, that's the earliest I remember. I don't know how old I was, two to four, probably three, maybe. But I, you know, I, I must have been all smaller when been laying down, you yeah. know. Huh. You remember what the, your grandparents' house was like? Oh, you bet. Yeah, Peggy and I lived there uh, three years before we left the farm. How big Well, that's on a 640. You know? All right. There it is. Uh, Stephen Austin. The original land flat is 640 acres right. for family. Right. Or 320 or 160. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, this is the part where I like to go investigate the land part, the really? history on the land and get yeah. the original documents, and that will be fun. Now, where my grand, my maternal grandparents live, uh, my maternal grandmother, she lived in a house it was built in 1903. Okay. That was Grandpa Keith's place. And it still stands. And our son, uh, Tim, and his wife, Rita, Choate, live in it. Okay. And uh, right on the road to Arlington, up there on the hill, halfway between Arlington and Newcastle. Yep. Well, do you remember the, when Drew had the downtown area? No. Uh, I do remember some houses uh, when <clears throat> across the on the north side of the road, right east of the cemetery, across from the old, from the brick schoolhouse, have y'all been through? No, I'm, I'm. You know, come to think of it, I think I did, but it was, you know, one of my wandering years and yeah. was wandering around looking. I think yeah. I've been by it, but now I'm going to have to go back. Yeah. <clears throat> Does is there a church? Mm. Has there been a church? No, not now. Uh, when I was a kid, there's a cemetery on the on this northeast northwest corner of the of the community, and uh, there was originally a church when my granddad was young, right across west of that on the northwest corner, and then on the on the southeast corner was where I went to church. And then in about, oh, I don't know how old I was, probably 7th, 8th grade, they opened up the old school. Well, after true school closed down, they opened up the brick schoolhouse that barely standing there now. And uh, it was church, First Methodist Church, until 
Oh, everybody went to all, well, all in Newcastle and different places and moved off. Yeah. I strolled as many people moving. Answered your question. That's all I can remember other than uh, those two churches and uh, those few houses on the north side of the road there right across north, across the, high, across the road from the schoolhouse. Okay. Those houses, three or four of them. I know the McIntyres live there, and it's a family, I think, by the name of Cox. Okay. They live there. Yeah. We had two school buses. Had one school bus, and uh, one week it would take the north side of the community, and the next uh, in the mornings, and the next week they'd take the south side in the morning. And that way, they would all have to get up so early every time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and the same way in the afternoon. If you waited for your ride home, sometimes you had to well, stay and play baseball for a while before the bus came back. So did you play a sport? No, I, I played uh, baseball there, true. You know, as kids will do. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ruth says, but... Uh, I, I played a little basketball at Newcastle, and I went out football at Ollie, but I, my appendix wouldn't let me play. And finally, when I was 26 years old, I had to get rid of it. Huh. But boy, it just doubled me over. So there went, there went my football career. Well, that was probably a blessing. Yeah, probably yeah. saved my life. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. When you were going to school in True, how many people were you in Gosh, I don't know. Uh, I'd say probably a dozen. I'm just guessing. But I would say there's probably a dozen in, in our class. So are there any pictures of y'all in no, there? No, there's not. Okay. Uh, no, those are old-timers. Ah, <laughs> there are some old-timers. Well, gr- y'all great- are, your fa- are your grandparents? or? No, there is one of my great-granddad. Oh, okay. A family picture. And... Uh, You'd like to see it. See, I've got it marked. They, they didn't number these pages. That's smart off now. I can't prove what I was going to say. And I've been riding on this thing. But this is. Okay. That's the Laramore. Actually, that's the Laramore family. And the, the bearded fellow down here on the end. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, right here. Mm-hmm. That was my great granddad, Rufus Henderson. I made some notation here, of course. Yeah. That is one. Yeah. See, my great grandmother, uh, yeah, my granddad Choate's mother, Jim's mother, was a Laramore. Okay. Out of Newcastle. And uh, they had. Quite a few of those boys and, and one or two girls. I don't remember. Aunt Molly and, and my great grandmother, Flora B. Flora Bell was her name. And that's about the only pictures I think there are. Let me show it this other big mark in here, if anything. No. What about this one back here? Is there another one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Laramore family. Right oh, okay. Now, my granddad Jim Chokes, <laughs> granddad, which is in that picture, name was, name was James. And so, it was James, uh, James Laramore. Thank Yeah. And also uh, James Choate. I think my granddad uh, Choate was probably named after Grandma's, uh, Grandma Laramore's father. And then my dad's probably named after his grandfather Choate. 
You know, when you're young, you don't know the questions to ask. No, or you just weren't listening. I yeah, and they that. don't tell you anything. Dad never told me anything. My granddad Chote, he and I did. I guess my Grandpa Chote and I worked more on the farm together than Dad and I did. Okay. Uh, of course, Dad and I worked together a lot in all three of us as I got older. But uh, he took my granddad Jim Chote told me more about the family and true itself. And, and I can go up there to that cemetery and see a lot of people that, well, no, I don't see a lot of people. See, <laughs> like, see a lot of tombstones that uh, are familiar with me because he, yeah. he told me. Yeah. There were several families even living there then around the area. And there was the Choates and the uh, Wards and the Tax. Coats, wards, and tacks, and also uh, Terrells. Terrells lived in a big ranch house right east of the cemetery. It burned. Windmill and old trees still there. Uh, no. So what did your great-grandfather, since he only lived to be 67, do you know what he died from? Well, when a granddad told me, I asked him that one time, and because he was, to me, old then, but he was young until now. Yeah. Fairly young. But uh, choats were prone to have catches in their backs, right under the shoulder blade. Yeah. He even handed <laughs> it down to me and a little bit after me, not much. I guess we all grew it. But Grandpa Choate had one of those catches, he thought. Now, this was in 1918, the year of the flu epidemic. Uh, so they said he died from pleurisy. I meant he died from pneumonia. Yeah. At home. At home. So you had that big 1918 epidemic that came through here. Right. So you feel like probably. That's just my. Uh, no, uh, it makes you sense. You know, it was worldwide. Yeah. So it just, it all coincides. That's all I know, you know. I never thought to tell him that because I probably didn't even know about the epidemic back then. Yeah. But, anyway. So what did your dad think? Well, the report showed he had a uh, ruptured aorta. Oh. Yeah. So I guess that's what it was. Yeah. He'd been having some problems and wound up in the hospital and all then. At least he was quick. Yep, he was 85. 85. Yep. Yeah, I'd been a visit him all day that day, and he seemed in good shape. And, and he was a scrappy little guy. And <laughs> walked in, he was sitting on the side of the bed at the hospital eating a hamburger. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, actually it was 2.30, around the nose. And December the 31st, 1998. And sitting there eating a hamburger, and I said, how you doing, Dad? Oh, I'm doing fine. He said, it's the best hamburger I ever ate. And I said, you eat a little late, aren't you? And he said, yeah, I didn't even get any breakfast. <laughs> so anyway, we visited, and he wanted to take a nap. And uh, Tim was living in Vernon, the son that lives on the farm now. And uh, I was going to go up and spend the night. I said, bye, Dad. And he said, bye. And see you in the morning. Okay. We got about 30 minutes up the road, and the phone rang. Tim said, I wonder what that's about. And I said, uh, how did I put it? I said, hope for the best, but expect the worst. And sure enough, he'd gone. Wow. Yeah, we were back with that. You know. Anyway, an AR to burst, of course. He yeah. Did it. And it's strange, his doctor was young. I'd say young, probably in his 40s. Medical doctor, maybe a heart doctor. I don't know. But uh, wasn't too long after that, he had a heart attack and died. Yeah. Of course, that could happen to anybody. Oh, yeah. But still. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about your life. Oh, my about goodness. When you were growing up. And Can I lie? At the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a Texan. You're oh, okay. <laughs> kind of tall. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have a best friend growing up? And had a what? Did you have a best friend in town? Well, uh, in the country, 
And true, I had two real good friends. One was Donald, Donald Ray Williams. Y'all, I don't know if y'all knew Don Williams or not. He, he was one of us that came to Graham. Okay. He was a school teacher. Oh, yes. Coach, Coach Williams. Coach Williams. Yeah. I, that's what I was trying to get out was Don Coach Williams. Williams. Yep. And uh, brother-in-law to O'Day Williams, although they weren't in Kent. Okay. His uh, Don's sister, Martha Jo, married O'Day Williams. I don't think I've ever even met O'Day. I guess he's probably gone by now. But anyway, Don Williams, Jackie Stringer. At Newcastle, and uh, myself, we played uh, played a lot of uh, oh football, baseball, whatever together. That true, and had a lot of fun with kids. Spent night with each other. We all lived in the country. Now, how many siblings did you have? None. Oh, Dad was an only child. I was the only child. My granddad, uh, Jim. Uh, was one of four. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Which the only child thing was rare back then. So. Well, they looked at me and said, "Holy smoke!" <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Broke the mold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One's enough. <laughs> well, what was a typical day like when you were growing up? At well, well uh, about the first thing I hear in the morning: "Hup, hup, hup, up, 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 Jerry, up, up." <laughs> that was started typical. Uh, How what time was that? Oh, for daylight. Yeah. And uh, had chores to do, cows to milk, uh, chickens to feed, eggs to gather, uh, go to school, come home, eat a snack, get back after it out in the country. Whatever needs to be done, get it down to living. <laughs> How many cows do you have? I remember one time our peak was 17. Oh, that's a lot of cows. That's a lot, that's of, a lot of cows. You had some four of them. Well, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, we'd take the cream and uh, had a separator. Had an old smokehouse that Grandpa Keith had and had a separator. And if you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. My separ- dad worked in a. Good. Dairy. And it worked in it uh, hand cranked. Our second separator had a motor on it, thank goodness. Ooh. But he'd almost go to sleep while he was doing that. But anyway, uh take the take the cream off the milk to do to Ollie, put it on the train and send it to the Trinidad, Colorado. Sell it to the creamery up there. Holy smokes. And I told myself if I ever get out of here <laughs> I'm going to go see a creeper. Did you ever? Yeah. Me and my wife and some of the kids when they were little, it wasn't all that much. <laughs> I bet it was, I don't know if it's even listen, living now or not. But uh, anyway, there's always farm work to do. Good gosh. How much did you have to do before you left school? Well, milk, slop the hogs, uh, whatever need to be done, you know. Dad's health was all the best. He's a hard-working man. Because of the catching his back? <laughs> yeah, one reason. You're not wrong. I've seen him down for a month with him. and uh, But uh, there was always something to do. Still is. Man alive. So is that what you did as a profession once you? No, the first 24 years I did. Okay. But uh, after I married, I got out of there. What would you do? Well, let's see, what did I do? Or what do you still do? <laughs> I worked in oil fields for a while on drilling rigs. And then uh, Peg and I moved to Wichita Falls. And I got, first of all, there wasn't enough land, three families. Yeah. That's what we had. So I said, I better do something. Or I was going to be, you know, just in the way, actually. So my dad and granddad were both still working. We went to Wichita Falls, and I got to work at City National Bank in the bookkeeping department. So, had you gone to school for that, or you just? Well, I went to I went to high school, grade school, high school, all in Midwestern University in Wichita Falls. Did you graduate Midwestern with? A... I was a class of '57. Okay, when what was your degree? Uh, agribusiness. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I went up there. 
stayed about, that's in 1959, September the 14th, 1959, and uh, on spring of 1950, no, 1965, I came to Graham as vice president and cashier of First National Bank. I got my basic, basics at City National. And I stayed there several years and, and had an opening in Ollie. So I thought I'd get a little closer to home. So I went, went to work at the First National Bank in Ollie as the vice president loan officer, Agri, Agri Lending. And, uh, they had problems up there. I won't go into detail. It doesn't matter. But anyway, I said it's time to go. So I went to Temple, Texas. Oh. As a, uh, same position. And they got problems. President got fired. And so I said, time to go. So I went over to, uh, Uvalde to look at a position. Peggy and I did. Oh my. And, uh, I don't know if I ever got that job or not, because I'd already sold our house there in Temple, and and uh, that's the only address they had. And came back through Kerrville from U Valley. I told Peggy, I said, "Boy, it's pretty country down here. Let's just move here." So we gathered everything up, moved to Kerrville, and I went. I uh, started selling. Uh, didn't even have a job. Had a little money left over in the house sale. So I started selling uh, vending machines for an old fellow there that serviced uh, Texas. And uh, I did that about a year, I guess, year and a half, and run out of territory. I mean, I I called on banks, any businesses like this that needed uh, uh, dispensers and little vending machines for their employees. And, uh, so I did that, that, oh, about a year and a half. It then, was Travis. Yeah. Then I, uh, got, let's see, I, I got my insurance license and went in the insurance bid with life and health insurance with a major company. And wound up as branch manager in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, Cotton Picket Company mm-hmm. cut out Texas. We had a heck of a good agency up there. And several in Texas. I won't call their name. They're still in business, but a uh, good company. But they shut Texas down. So we came back to the hill country and built a home. And so we uh, came back to the hill country and built a new home in Kerrville and lived in it. Uh, and I, I had an agency there in Chernobyl and came back to Cur- back to Young County in 1998 after my dad died Okay, and been here ever since. So did you work insurance here or did you just work I the did, ranch? I did some. I pretty well retired by then. Yeah. And uh, I spent most of my time on the on the farm, digging post holes and fencing. Had some, we bought some goats. Dad always raised sheep, sheep and cattle. And the uh, sheep market, lamb market is pretty good, but the the wool market got dirt cheap. Mm-hmm. So uh, after Dad died, I sold them and uh, uh, bought boar goats. Well, they were fine. They make a little money. But they sure like that net wire on a sheep wire, bigger spaces. They just do like that till it got through. So I said, "The heck with that." So I got rid of them, and now just run cattle. Yeah. So I had goats for twenty years. Uh, they're in uh, off of Loving Highway. Oh, did you? Yeah, what yeah. What was your maiden name? Honeywell. Oh, you were honey. Wasn't yeah, but my dad didn't. It was I married co- a plowman, and we had a place out there, and I ran some goats until <laughs> my second husband went. Either the goats go or the dogs go, and he loved the dogs, so the goats went. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 
It's a love-hate relationship. I see. But anyway, uh, our oldest son, Tim, and his wife, Rita, as I said, live on the farm up there. And uh, So what does he do? Well, uh, he is self-employed other than, other than farming mm-hmm. and ranching. He's self-employed in, I guess you'd say, construction. Uh, he has dump, uh, dump truck, is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. dump truck and the equipment that go with it. He oh, does. very good. There's what, a, what's this company called? Uh, Trutex. T-R-E- I have seen that advertised. T R U T E X. Yeah. I think that's what it's spelled. That's a good name to have, isn't it? It is, yeah. True Tech. Well, it's that true is Texas, good. So I know. <laughs> okay. Very good. He stays pretty busy, sick right now. He, you know, Rita came down with something. <laughs> but they're getting out there all right. I guess he got sick because he works all the time and needs to rest. Yep. Die. I had a little bout of respiratory stuff, and I believe God was shutting me down. Yeah. It'll happen. Well, do you know if there were ever any Indian problems at your property when y'all family lived there? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, Grandpa came there in the early 70s, and I think it pretty well shut in. Although, I don't know when that Warren Magan tra- wagon train massacre was. That was 71, okay. and it would have been... So it would have been due east of y'all. Yeah. He uh, he hauled supplies uh, at first years there from Fort Richardson over Jacksboro to Fort Belknap. And I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think my granddad told me that, that his dad uh, came across after that massacre. Now, I may be dreaming that, but in the back of my mind it sticks. Yeah. Uh, Whenever that, that time had been about right. Yeah, or the Brett Johnson, because they said there was a bigger train, or another train that heard the attack of Brett Johnson, so. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Do you know, my granddad cleared all that land. Of course, they weren't mesquites. My great-granddad yeah. weren't mesquites then, but uh, my granddad chose that prairie grass was knee-high. I know that there, were a lot, there was a lot of different types of equipment. Well, cattle, yeah. yeah cowboy. Of course, after I left, they got air conditioning tractors and uh, and four wheelers. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was just cause of the times. But uh, yeah, we did all our stuff by hand and on on heart. And how many horses, Joy? Oh, golly, up to maybe a half a dozen at a time. No more than that, maybe less. Okay. I had a mare. I had a mare and an old cricket, and uh, she had several. Uh, Colts. And my granddad Chote always had a horse. Kept a saddle all the time. Yes, sir. And just about. And rode every day. Just about. I remember riding in the saddle with him. And I was just, you know. (laughs) One time uh, I said, Old True School, about the third grade. And uh, it had been raining. And it was time for school to be out. And the windows were up. That Northeast corner of that building still stands. And uh, kind of a shadow came across the room, looked up, and he's sitting there looking in the, uh, in the, in the window at me on his horse. <laughs> horse, old white horse, named him Old John. And uh, sitting there looking at me. And the teacher, I can't remember her name. I've tried to think of it, and I can't think of it. But the teacher said, okay, Jerry, you can go now. And it was on a Friday afternoon, and I got up and I jumped through that window right in the saddle. <laughs> and we were just about out the edge of the, he's taking me home with him, spending the weekend, or the night anyway. And I remember he said, Grandma, he called my grandma, her name was Myrtle Keith. But he said, uh, Mama's making soup. Mama's making yeah. soup. Yeah. That was a good occasion. <laughs> Out the window and on the horse, just yeah. like a western. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, when you um, said you were up, growing up there, uh, what did you all do for fun in town? Work. Work? Yeah. You got it. Friends came yeah. over, and what did you all do? Work. Work? <laughs> no, the friends didn't work. But, uh, we, you know, what a heck of a lot, too, 
<coughs> to do yeah. uh, Saturday afternoon go to the show maybe see the westerns after we got a little older and uh, anyway <laughs> quite a lie okay. sounds like it we appreciate you coming and, and giving this the lineage of your family well thank you is phenomenal you know the great granddad that came from Tennessee uh, he lived in a little log cabin down there by the highway. And then he built the house that I grew up in, and my <coughs> son lives in now, he and his wife. But that house was built in 1903. And that was the Lattimore? The- Larimore. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. And there, there, I don't believe there's any, the last Larimore that lived in Young County that I know of passed away recently. And that was Neil Larimore. He lived on up toward Olney and uh, on the place they ever lived, I guess, in that area. Well, the book by Kerry Crouch was talking about how Terrells are the ones that uh, founded yeah. the town. George Terrell. Hotel, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, George was kicked it off, I think. And uh, according to her book, he was given an acre of land to anybody that would build a house there so they could call it. That's the- right. I've read that somewhere, yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. And then when you mentioned Larimer and some of the other names that I had yeah. been looking at, those are what they called founding families there. Right. right. Yeah, the Terrells, the Larimers, the Choates, the Keese, uh, the Wards. And uh, I don't know how year they came with the tax. Uh, Wilson tax great granddad. Okay. I don't know when they came in. Well, it says that. Warren Ward and George Terrell were the first ones to build homes. Yeah, the- I'm sure that's true. Yeah. So. Uh, you remember where the post office was in True? No, nah, it was gone. I remember where it was in Orth. In Orth? Y'all have Orth covered? <laughs> well, I know that when the railroad came in, that most of the people that had businesses and stuff in True moved to Orth yeah. to be closer to the railroad. Yeah, it was there. I remember the railroad at Arth. Okay, it ran from Wichita Falls to Ranger, Texas. And they called it the Tri Weekly. It would go to Ranger on Monday <laughs> and went back to Wichita Falls on Friday. Oh, okay. <laughs> called it the Tri Weekly. I remember 1949 after the war, cars were hard to get. And Dad had ordered a new. 1949 Chevrolet sedan. And you could see them hauling them. I guess they came, I don't know, from where, heading north to Olney. And uh, I like wore my old horse out trying to watch that train, see that I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, a, I was about a freshman in high school. And uh, one day I saw the load of Chevrolets going toward Olney, and man, I went back to old dad. Next day he went in, sure enough, it was there. Uh-huh. Yeah. So do you still ride? No, I wish I could. And get my old feet and legs just won't take it anymore. Yeah. I rode until I was nearly eighty. <coughs> but uh, anyway, that's been two or three decades ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever ride that train? Never did. Never did. Uh-uh. <coughs> Excuse me. That little kid saddle about like that wasn't that fancy when I was growing up. We've got a few saddles. That's a side saddle from uh, it is, Kim Rodeo. It? Yes, well, it sure is. We've got one little saddle over here. It's actually a a bucking saddle. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. The high swells. I've been I've been enjoying that show they've had on last week. That rodeo out at uh, oh the NFR. Yeah, you yeah. Watched it just about every night. Well. Hopefully, it'll move to Fort Worth in the future. Might do it. Yeah, we used to go down to uh, show the sheep. Yes. And uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, both. And my dad was on the board at the uh, uh, at stock show, Fort Worth stock show, livestock show. Really? Yeah, in his later latter years. Yeah. Yeah, he, he thought sheep, well, he lived and breathed sheep. <laughs> yeah. We went to Illinois one time, bought a car load, train car load of Southdowns. And wow. he said he's buying them for me to show it 
and I did show him, but he was the one. He was a sheep man. Now he really, I'll give him credit for it. So he, did you show him through 4-H or FFA or did uh, they have? That's, uh, both. Yeah, yeah. 4-H and FFA both. That's fun. Yeah. Showed a calf one time. Got him. Got him sifted. He he was a nice calf, but I pick. I didn't really pick it. Dad picked. Uh, too strong a show for him. If I'd taken him out of the park to the uh, Wichita County show, he might have even played. Well, he's a good calf. Bought it from Mr. Tom Donnell down here at uh, Lifeville. And, uh, but, uh, anyway, I, I remember took him to Fort Worth and he got sifted. Oh, I never saw so many calves in my life. And, uh, had to lead him out to the train, uh, to put him on the train to, I deal, named him Shorty. Shorty. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how old I was, probably, uh, I don't know, preteen. Put him on a train. I dang near cried. Mm-hmm. But I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Went back home, went down to the barn, and locked Shorty's hair. Laying, laying. <laughs> I still nearly cried. <laughs> <laughs> now, for people who don't know what you're talking about, what is it? Oh, that's a, he did what he was eligible to come to the show, but but he got sifted out. He wasn't good enough to stay in to be in a placing place. Yeah, and uh, so you could sell him or take him home. No, you could sell him. Ah. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that calf again. Oh wow! For some reason I don't know why. But anyway, old Shardy, I was a couple of weeks. I was over it. <laughs> Wouldn't, yeah. hard, wouldn't hardly eat the beef for about a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you have a favorite horse? Yeah, old Cricket. Cricket. Nine, nine years old. Uh, I guess my granddad probably bought him. I bought her, rather. Came out of old Mexico. And she was a, a short couple. Not quite average height. I don't know. She was probably about maybe 10 hands. And run like a son, stout as a mule, man. I don't know how old she was. I think about 12. And she had a foal every year. And me a riding her. And about a month before, <laughs> before she'd, she'd have her foal, dad said, get off that horse. <laughs> and I'd get off old Cricket. Let her rest. So I did. And she sure had some pretty, pretty coat. You uh, break any of them? I did the last one. And, uh. But I was gone. We were gone as a family. Mom, Dad, and I came home. My grandpa had sold all. Had sold them both. Oh wow! Uh, but I tell you, I was about fourteen by then, and I was kind of interested in something else by then, uh, other than horses. <laughs> I got over it in a couple <laughs> of days, but I still think old Cricket quite. A bit. In fact, I dream about her sometimes. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I've got a picture of her and her foal, her last foal, Dusty was his name, and it's, it's got the back half of her and all of him, and I'm shaking hands with him. Oh. Yeah. And I look like I'd be about 13, 14, wow. maybe. Just a skinny kid, but uh, old Cricket was tough. Uh, one time we went to the stock show in Wichita Falls, Iowa Park, then. <clears throat> and Dad came home to check on things, and Cricket was at the back door, and she'd been there a good while pawing. And uh, she had somehow had got cut on her flank up there. He called old Ward Bond out of Ollie. Uh, name, not Ward, that's the actor. Anyway, Doc, the veterinarian Bond came down and sewed her up. He said it'd been much longer she'd bled dead. Oh, my. But she was there wanting help, you know. Pawing at the door. That's a smart horse. <laughs> Some small old man, she was smart. Yeah. What's probably your favorite memory growing up? Oh, cricket? Cricket? Yeah, really. Riding my horse. Yeah. Yeah. I rode one of her foals after she was gone. In fact, I had, had, uh, had him and also uh, another foal's son. His name is Lightning. He wasn't worth a darn. But <laughs> he was <laughs> I think he had emphysema. I never did see him smoke, but boy, he, <gasps> and then the cricket's, uh, son was Rocket. 
And they were born the same year. And so Lightning was Cricket's grandson. And Rocket was a good little horse. But I guess after I, I don't know what happened with the horse. Don't know. I got on the other thing, got married, and you know, this and that. Yes, sir. Yeah. In fact, I think I still rode light, did some after we married. I know I did. Yeah. But hard, riding horses and working cattle. My, I didn't mind plowing much. Uh, in fact, I still enjoy plowing when I quit, had to quit. But uh, I guess the least, my least important, my least fond memory is working sheep. Oh, oh man, a lot. You know, it, it wasn't just the working them. It was getting ready for show. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be out doing something. And then that curry comb and trimming and all that. Oh, man. Now, I, I think if I'd ever got into it, I'd have enjoyed showing cattle. I really do, but uh, didn't do it. That's all right. Yeah. Well, if you ever get an opportunity and you've got some old pictures of those times that we could add to this video, we'd yeah. love to make copies of them. You know, that's pretty sad. I, uh, back in those old days, those old box cameras. Yes, sir. Uh, parents never did have a, uh, I don't guess even had them, a, a movie camera, you know, home movie. Not any at all. I looked through an old Looked through an old uh, bill that Peggy put together one time. Try to have some pictures in it. You want them of the, of just me or the family or your family and your story. Yeah. Okay. We want to rake up. Yeah, awesome. We appreciate wonderful. it. You bet. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to tell you what little I know. I'm still, I'm going to go back to, I am so impressed with the lineage of your family yeah. staying in this area. Yeah. The fact your son's here. Yeah. We have another son, Randy. He's Randall Choate. He and his wife, Deborah, are in uh, Tennessee. And he has a, a small trucking business. Okay. And uh, our daughter, Kathy, married a boy named Kathy, Tim Kathy. Yeah, so her name's Kathy Kathy. Oh, that's the only reason she married him, isn't it? I guess so. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, they live in Kerrville. And that's that's the crop, plus all the grandkids and great grands. As far as I know, they're all on the ground, but who knows? But that's you know? five generations of choats that are living on your property right now, correct? Yeah, Grandpa, Jim, Dad, and me, Tim, and actually Derek, Tim's uh, son. Because he, they're in uh, working up yonder, but they have a home there on one of the places. Oh. Six generations. So they'll be wow. back. That's so six, actually. Derek, uh, his little boy Brassus, seven. Seven. Isn't that right? Grandpa Choate, Jim Choate, Hamilton Choate, Jerry Choate, Tim Choate, Derek Choate, and Brassus, his little boy. He's four or five now. So seven, uh, seven generations. You know, I think the governor gives you a certificate or recognizes multi generational families over a hundred years. Oh, if it's years. been over, yeah, I know if it's over a hundred years, but yeah, if it went over a hundred and fifty. Wonder how you get that information up. I will know. find that out for you. Okay. Yes. Uh, I know who to ask. Lee Wiley Birch. Oh, uh, Lee Wiley. Yeah. His, his ranch has that certificate. Oh, yeah, I know Lee Wiley well. Well, he's got a beautiful place out here. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. He's decorated it too. <laughs> yeah, he got cows, cows, and water. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank you. Tell your yes, wife, sir. who I thought was your daughter. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that we appreciate her. Okay, I'll do. Her. Yeah, I'm glad she came. Yeah. Yeah, that's it on my grandpa's side. Of course, my grandmother's side. That's a different story. That's the keys. Okay. They came from Tennessee back in those days. Grandpa Keith owned the gin there at True. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Of course, it burned down. Then he had yeah. to, then he had two ten, two gins in Newcastle, and uh, I know one of them burned. I don't know what happened to the other, but there's one right east, right west of uh, the highway down there when you come in from Olney, 
And the other one is where the gin is now, I believe. I think that's right. It wound up being the Rowdens. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I don't know who owned it. I owned it now. Okay. We appreciate you coming in well, and thank telling you. us. Enjoyed it. We did too. Thank you, sir.